Do you own a TP-Link Archer router such as TP-Link C5 or C6 and need to configure it for the first time, perhaps after a reset or simply wish to master its configuration? Welcome back to our channel GoDynamic IT. In today's video, we will dive into the WAN configuration of the router and together we will set up the router in dynamic IP mode. And as a bonus, at the end of the video, I will also share some troubleshooting tips and tricks. So let's jump right into the video without any further delay and configure the router. Okay, so before we jump into the configuration, let's try to understand that how service provider provide us the connectivity and then how we can connect the cable to the service provider cable to the router. So this is the uh, TP-Link Archer router. There is a service provider here and service provider will provide you one ethernet cable. This is a LAN cable to your WAN port. This is your WAN port. And once you have connectivity to the WAN port, then the, our Axe software configuration will, will start. But make sure that you have a WAN connectivity ready with you. So actually, service wire doesn't provide you connectivity like this. So there is, a, there is a switch in between. So maybe in your house or neighbor house somewhere, the service provider will provide the uplink to this, this switch. And from this switch, they will provide the home service, like service to your, uh, to your maybe this is your house, so one port is one cable is goes to your house the other cable goes to some other house so this is the another router here in some other house right and like like that only they will provide the services okay so let's bring my browser here this is my browser and we have to type this ip address of the router so by default ip address of this router is one uh, archer router is one dot one now sometimes this page will not open so what happened is like you have to connect your router to either directly directly to this uh, your pc so in this example uh, if i can show it to you so this is the router and how you have to connect it is like this so from any of this lan port you have to connect your laptop or desktop the ethernet cable you should have one small, small ethernet cable connect directly to this, uh, this one of this yellow port this is the this is called or the all these four ports are called the lan port and the blue ports which you see here this is the wan port right i then explain internet cable this internet service provider cable will go to this wan port and your pc ethernet pc will go to the lan port and if you do not have let's say um, you do not have a ethernet cable right so what you can do is you can connect this with the wi-fi so ssid so in this tp link there is some two default ssid which you can connect directly with the router that is the tp link 59 fa and 59 fa 5g and and if you connect with that there is a default pin to that that i will show it to you in the picture and you can connect it and then you can configure this the same way so let's bring our browser here so this is my browser and once you bring the browser one more thing that uh, so sometime what happen is uh, your router let me delete this things on the screen okay so sometime your ethernet or wi-fi have a static ip address configure on 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 it and if you have a static IP address configure and we won't be able to provide the uh, IP to it. So what you have to do is we have to go to your uh, command prompt and then type the IP config. You can see here in the IP config we have an IP, IP address called 0.100 and 0.1. This IP must be there either on your Wi-Fi car or the Ethernet adapter. It depends like how you are connected through wired or wireless. So mine is the wireless and you can see here mine IP is 0.1 and uh, I can able to reach this IP address 192.168.0.1. So you can see here I ping this IP address 192.168.0.1, and then um, I can able to reach that. That means our connectivity from router to PC is good. So you can test this in either connect either ways, like in, through the wireless or wired also. So now come back to this screen here. This says 192.168.0.1, and uh, I can open this web page of this router and here it's asking for the new password so new password always try to get wrong password so let me put this password here okay let's get started now you can see here this is the first page of the router 
so here i just said that in the intro of the video we will go with the dynamic ip configuration so a service provider will give you the dynamic ip address to you right you don't have to do anything in it they will ask you to sir connect this router connect this cable to your router or maybe if you have resetted the router this cable will be everything will connect it as it is right so all you have to do is just click on the next and here it is asking for the vlan id some service provider will give you the vlan id so what is the vlan id it's, it's a, some kind of number in this router you can provide you can add this number from 7 to 4094 this is maximum is 4094 so assume that i have given a, a, a vlan id of 1001 and click on the next so in my case i do not have any vlan id so i am not going to add it here so just click uh, you for your case if it is a vlan id just add it and click on the next and then here it's asking the network access id so you can see here there's a two network network access id here one is 2.4 gigahertz another one is 5 gigahertz so if you want to change the name of your router you can just edit the name and change it here this is editable and this is the default password and this is it is written in the back side of your router also so change the router from here my wifi wifi 2.4 right and then you can same thing you can write it here why my wifi 5 right so this will once you look into this through the, your uh, mobile phone or your laptop it will show you the two clear names here right and click on the next so my case um I'm going to show you the default one. You can change it uh, at your. So this is how you can change it. Now click on the next and just save the configuration. So while it's uh, changing the configuration, let me show you. So I just as of now I do not have an internet connectivity on it. So let's ping this Google DNS. Google DNS ping 8.8.8. You can see this is not reachable. And uh, and you can see this is completed and click on the next. and it says that you can test the connectivity or click on the finish so just click on the finish and you can see here this is the red one is running and now it's become yellow so it says that you have a connectivity from internet to your good connectivity from internet to your archer c5 router or c6 router it's the same way and then you have a 2.4 gigahertz uh, radio like wifi it's working good and then you have a 5 gigahertz radio also it's working good now it says that you have a two you have a wireless client so you can see here i have a one wireless client connected here and then you have a wired client so it will show you this wired and wireless also and this is the usb disk internet status you can see here this is showing you connected and uh, connection type is a dynamic ip this is the ip address you have received from the service provider this is your wan router ip wan port ip address and this is the dns and this is the gateway of router right so now let's go back to our uh, command prompt and just test the ping connectivity yeah you can see here i'm able to ping this uh, google dns now let's go back to check the internet speed so we can do the speed test you can see this internet speed here um, i'm going i'm getting a 100 mbps internet connectivity which is considered to be the good one right because this is a very powerful router i am connected through the 5 gigahertz now it's now it's time to discuss on about on the troubleshooting the first troubleshooting thing is always from your uh, service provider when you service provider provide you the connectivity always connect on the wan port right this is your wan port this the blue color is your wan port this is the first troubleshooting steps the second troubleshooting step is you should always check your command prompt and check your this ip config ip config and check if you, whether you are getting the ip address in 192.168 0.100 range or not this is the second thing i think that's it for today's video If you have any questions query or any feedback related to this video please do let me know in the comment box thank you very much for watching my video